Okay, hello folks, uh, this is Transit Joe here, and on this video today we're going to go back to 1996, July 4th, 1996. It was the July 4th, of course, holiday celebration. I was, uh, I was working in the downtown area, and, um, Miami, we're also, city of Miami, we're doing their centennial celebration also and this kind of kind of got us off guard a little bit but thankfully i started noticing the the, the passenger loads going downtown coming into town from um the north part of the county from the beach from the west and there was a lot of people coming all through the day a lot of people coming and um trying to be proactive and still only a couple of years as a supervisor, I um, I called for extra buses. And um, we started storing buses, me and another uh, supervisor, we started storing buses in downtown waiting for the break of the event. Because we, by the amount of people coming in, I know it was very inexperienced at the time, but I knew it was going to be it was going to be huge. We did not know that the city of Miami were celebrating their centennial at the same time, that uh, July 4th. And um, at that time, we used to have the full-size uh, Metro Bus Division and some of the contracted routes that we had back in the uh, early 90s and 80s were brought in-house as a mini bus division. And they used uh, lower tiered uh, pay uh, operators. And they had their own supervisors too. Eventually we all merged, but we as a, a Metro bus supervisor, full size bus supervisor, used to do both divisions. The, 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 the mini bus supervisors only did mini bus. So it was mostly us, and mostly us doing the, the street coverage, special events, and uh, and all that stuff. And um, we, uh, well, to get to that date, because it may, it might, this video may be, it may go a little too long. To get back to that date, we started storing the buses, and uh, the dispatcher at Carway, you know, he was a very good dispatcher. He's he sent me, you know, some pool size buses, but then he called and says, listen, uh, I got an operator here with a minibus. Do you have any, uh, a minibus operator, do you have any use for that? And I know it's a very hardworking lady. I knew her. And I said, oh, sure, send it this way. I'll, uh, my intentions was maybe to put her on a Route 6 or use her as a shuttle. And, um, and use the full-size buses for the, the big loads. Well, that night turned out to be something else. It, it We had so many people. So, so many people. And we're trying to put as many buses as we can. Uh, once, the, once they broke, uh, I had a, a, an operator that later became a... Uh, a supervisor and just recently retired, good friend of mine. He started doing the loop around downtown because we would send one bus. If anybody's familiar here with a with a uh, downtown Miami, I would send one bus to the Garment Center, pick up for Route 11, the Flagler line, and then I would send one to go around the loop for the 11 also to pick up around the festivity area, the downtown loop. It wasn't for the beach buses and all that, they would go by there anyway, so that didn't have to do the special provision. So, so I told uh, uh, Omar was there with me. I said, "Go ahead and let's do the loop and see uh, how many people we can pick up." And he got down to uh, Biscayne Boulevard where the festivities was at. And he called me, and he says, "Listen, they are fighting to get on the bus. I mean, these people are just..." beating each other up to get on the bus. I need, I said, send me whatever you got. Send me whatever you got. I, I said, okay. 
So the only thing I had was that minibus then. And uh, I told that operator, I says, listen, you're gonna, I'm not going to tell you you're going to run 11 because it's against union rules and everything else, but you're going to help out. Uh, just take it down, take it down Flagler Street. And we're going to fill your bus up, you're going to take it down Flagler Street, and uh, we'll see how far we make it. So she had one of those, um, it was a brand new bus, it's a Ford Cutaway. And we, I went around the loop with her, just in case something more fights will break up and all that. And she filled that cutaway to capacity. And she went down Flagler Street. We had no signs on it that said 11, nothing, just, just passenger relief. But, well, that night, uh, it was a success. We got everybody out. I thought maybe I'd get some recognition out of it. No, I didn't. Um, you know, every job has this certain individual which nobody really respects. You get the certain individuals, either a rabble rouser, uh, a snitch, a liar the kind of thing that they're making themselves look by throwing somebody else under the bus. Well, we got one too. And believe me, I will put this one against anybody else in the country. This guy's really a... I'm leave it that way. He, uh... He wasn't even there. But he found out about that minibus going down flying the street. And he went to the union, and the union, uh didn't know the whole facts and my boss called me in and I told him what happened he said no you cannot run a, a, a minibus on the 11 what the hell's wrong with you blah 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 he started cussing me out our boss at the time was uh came from a dispatch background he wasn't a bad guy but he knew nothing about street supervision he knew nothing about that nothing about well, that's my cat <laughs> Yeah, what do you want? He knew nothing about street supervision. And uh, he threatened to discipline me and this and that. And I, and, and I was kind of young, you know. I said, okay, well, you do that. I'm going to the press because, you know, I thought I'm, I was getting called in here to be uh, to be recognized. For the, I've, I've been a supervisor two years and I was proactive. You know, I saw what was coming. I got the extra buses. And we moved everybody out of downtown. You don't know what it was with those all those drunks fighting to get on buses. I mean, we, the bus operators, the supervisors, we all risked our lives uh, that night, our safety. And somehow uh, we got it done. We got enough buses going to the beach and all that where we moved everybody out. Uh, anybody watching this video as a street supervisor, you know how hard it is to do that, how hard it is to find extra volunteers and buses on a, on a holiday. But somehow we all came together, the dispatchers, the, the supervisors, the operators, and we got it done. But yet the next day I was being called out because the bus that went down Flagler Street. I said, I told, told my boss, says, you got nothing against me. I'm only out there trying to do my job, trying to get the people out. The, the bus does not did not display a Rod 11 sign. It did not, uh, wasn't running a, a Rod 11. In fact, it was running a Route 6, which is a minibus route, but a modified 6. That's what I called it in my paperwork. I mean, it's... You can, you can read between the lines. So he was all pissed off and all that because I don't think he cared about me. He thought it was, a, you know, some hot dog or something. And he, uh, but it happened, it happened. Now, a couple of weeks later, back to the same setup, minibus, uh, full-size bus, whatever, there was a shortage of uh, operators, minibus operators. It was uh, 
it was about, some, about a month later. And um, back then, at that time, the the Route 38, which is a very popular date land to Florida City via the busway, uh, was a very popular line. <coughs> Excuse me. We did not have a... We had a manpower shortage in the minibus division. And 38 used to finish running early out on Sundays at that time. And uh, that the, the 31 will be the one which is the local only goes to uh, halfway down the busway, although that time we did have a busway with the newest one. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, we did have a busway. It was brand new. And the 31... Uh, only went halfway down. That one ran to 1 o'clock in the morning, but at least it got people down to Cutler Ridge where they would transfer to the 35. And the 35 ran into Florida City and Homestead and all the neighborhoods in between. So, dispatcher called away informed me that he had nobody to run the 31, the last 31. That mm, there will be no access to South Miami Dade after 8 o'clock. And that was a, that's the, well, a Sunday service, uh, as far as uh, mini bus drivers, is only a few routes. I said, well, he says, I got to get those people down there somehow. So I'm going to have to get a, a big bus. And so where am I going to get a, a recruit? Let, let me see. I said, okay, we, it was a thing, the Dolphins home op opening game. And we used to run park and shide. Park, park and ride shuttles from different parts of the county into the, into the stadium. So I went down to FIU to try to recruit one of those cutouts because that's one of the park and ride locations. And uh, guess who showed up cutting out? The same person that I was talking about earlier, the, one, the same one that complained about the what we did downtown and all that stuff. And I said, hey, I'm not going to say his name. Uh, you want to get me in trouble again? He just gave me this look, you know. I says, and make some money while you're doing it? And he looked at me like, oh, I said, it's simple. I need you to run this 31 to uh, Cutler Ridge. So this time of morning, I gave him the schedule. I said, I need to get those people down there. Well, big smile on his face. <laughs> he said, all right, oh, thank you, thank you, this and that. I said, it's backstabbing, I don't know. Anyway, I knew what he was going to do. He went, he did the route, he got his overtime pay. Next day, he went out and snitched saying that I told him to run a, a 31 and give him a 31 schedule and all that stuff. And I says, well, I says, yeah. Same boss, all right, called me. Coming back in his office. He was red, looked like he was having a heart attack. Oh, my God, the union is on me. Blah, blah, blah. You did this, you did that. Blah, blah, blah. I said, no. I said, listen, I ran a 31. Oh, but 31 is a mini bus route. He says, no, a 31 is a mini bus route during the weekends and the middays. And it's referred to as the 231. I did not run a 231. I ran a 31. And I needed to get those people to South Aid. Again, I thought you were calling me in, me in here to recognize me. And he laid it on me, said, you think you're the shit, blah, blah, blah. He let me, you know, called me all kinds of things. I'm going to suspend you. I said, you suspend me, I'm going to run to the media. And I'm going to tell them what's going on in this place. So, nothing happened. I didn't get recognized. Man, I still hardly ever do anyway. I got used to that. But nothing happened. Everybody back down. The people got to where they were going. And 
this certain individual is not a bus driver anymore. He's now in a supervisory capacity. He is worse than ever. But I said every job has one. But if you want to get the one from your job and throw them against the one from this job here that I know, this one here is it's a little bit it's a little bit lower in the scale, if you know what I mean. So anyways, well this video didn't run as uh as long as I thought it was it it, it was gonna run. So we're gonna um cut it here. And um uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe. If you know someone like that in your work environment, I would love to read about it. I'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, for now, folks, y'all have a great day. Stay safe. Red button, by the way.